I'll get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me to talk about staying ahead of the curve with your program's fraud prevention and compliance. I have an ambitious amount of content to try to get through in this short session, so I'll talk fast. Um, but hopefully we might have a bit of time for Q&A. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Chrissy Cataret, and I lead our compliance department at CJ, both network quality, overseeing the whole network, as well as our program compliance services for individual clients' proactive needs. A fun fact, I was a basketball referee for nine years, and it's weirdly aligned with my job now because it's basically just, thank you, uh, it's basically to ensure a fair playing field for all of the parties involved, for advertisers, for publishers, and also in the service of the consumers. I've spent 18 years at CJ, uh, much of that on the advertiser program management side, with the last five years fully focused on compliance. Uh, and I've worked closely with credit card advertisers, with telecom, with the compliance sensitive, as well as retail and business services across the gamut. So our agenda today, I'm going to go through three topics, adware, PPC ad hijacks, and fake content that are emerging, if not entirely new themselves, in new ways, uh, especially over the past year or so. I'll talk about why that threat matters to us, what CJ is doing to help protect our partners, and then also what you can do, both some content for advertisers as well as for publishers. Hopefully I'll have time to do a quick run through a few tools that you might be interested in using yourself and a key takeaways wrap up. So first up, we'll talk about adware. Now, adware is basically software that almost always was not installed on purpose by the consumer or was installed for something else, uh, advertising itself, for example, as a great way to save and organize your recipes. But it could also then uh, serve up ads uh, in places that almost no one wants them to be. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with the infamous Target ad appearing on Walmart's homepage due to adware. Uh, I don't know if we ever figured out if Target meant to do that, uh, but Walmart certainly was not selling that as an advertisement on their homepage and certainly not to a direct competitor. It's a bane of the existence for the average consumer, or in my case, for the average daughter of parents who don't understand how they got adware on their computer and why all these things are happening. And um, you know, it's, it's also a real problem for us as marketers. Uh, I imagine that there might be a few advertisers who are like, oh, if I'm Target, I want to get my ad on Walmart's homepage. That's awesome. But there's a lot else going on in this area that even those who are maybe a little bit more on the edge of that competitiveness would not be okay with. One of the things that AdWare does today is actually not even serve an ad at all, but just take credit for something else that's already happening. Trying to get that last click even off of your organic pages. So it can say, hey, I referred this, this consumer I'll take that commission. It's a problem for publishers because they're stealing your traffic. They're stealing credit for your legitimate value-added referrals. And of course, it's a problem for advertisers because you want to be paying for what actually led the consumer to you. It's also a problem for the user experience sometimes because even though it's not showing an ad, it can disrupt, it can pop up, pop under, land them on the page that they weren't headed to. So I'm going to show you a short video of this exact phenomenon. And let me preface this with, while we found it in our reviews of uh, adware that we actively make sure isn't happening in CJ, we just checked a competitor's site, a competitor's uh, advertiser program, and we very quickly found an example of adware in action. So Forever 21, can't hide that. Organic load, consumer goes to the site, clicking around, but wait. There's a new browser suddenly that's opened. The consumer did not open it. They were trying to go check out some graphic t-shirts. And now it's back, but it's back on the home page. And you can see that there's two tabs open now. The second one was opened by the adware, popped up in front of the consumer, who may or may not even realize that they have another tab open, depending on their, their savviness and what they're looking at at that moment. But now there's affiliate tracking. And that tracking will credit this adware-related publisher in the event that there is a conversion. Uh, so none of us want this. I want to reiterate very clearly that CJ does not allow this. We actively look for these things happening, immediately remove it, and if there were any commissions related to it, return them to the advertiser. Uh, not only does this 
you know, address the immediate problem, but it also helps deter recurrence because if people are not getting money for it, hopefully they will move on to something else or maybe our competitor's network in this case. Um, so we have, of course, a strict software policy. Uh, some consider it to be too strict, although we think it's just right. Always welcome to feedback, but our ethos is advertiser choice. So transparency by the publishers, obviously, even if you have AdWords, don't do it. Uh, but and then also having you know, a clear end user license agreement. The install is for the on the consumer's part because they wanted to install it, and the software does what it purported to do. Uh, and we also give advertisers the choice whether or not you want to work with software publishers at all. Although there is a lot of value in a lot of them, many are very compliant and awesome additions to your program. We do testing of all software that publishers are going to use to promote in the network, assuming they've disclosed it, uh, which we enforce strictly. Um, we also do this proactive monitoring, same way we found that for Forever 21 example. And we're constantly looking for new ways to figure out what's going on, how do we keep our network clean. I wish I could announce it in full, but I am happy to say we're close to completing a deal to add another scalable uh, automated way of identifying adware and anything related to our network that we would want to make sure was removed. Advertisers, what can you do? Well, have clear program terms. You'll hear that from me a lot. Uh, publishers who are compliant with the network still need to know what's compliant within your program. Uh, you need to know who you're working with. Know your publishers and uh, you know, keep tabs on them in a good way. You're probably doing that already to optimize, to see who's growing, how can you grow them more. Think about it from a compliance lens as well. Is what's happening aligned with what I thought they would be doing? And if not, ask questions. Uh, you can always talk to the publishers. You can also submit something to our uh, network quality team and just say, hey, something looks weird here. Can you help me investigate it? Give us the details that you have so far, and we'll help figure out if it's something that needs to be addressed and if it does to address it. Publishers. I know you're all like, yeah, of course, Chrissy, but you, you read the software policy. You know, read our publisher service agreements. Uh, they're there, they're accessible, and then of course the advertiser program terms as well. Uh, ensure all of your sources are compliance, and if there's something you're interested in buying traffic from, maybe to generate uh, volume to your site, if you're not sure if it's compliant, you can ask our network quality team. We would be delighted to get that question before something happens that shouldn't. Um, break out all of your properties and promotional methods as applicable with an individual promotional property identifier, PID. This helps with the transparency thing for sure. You know, this is where I'm promoting you, advertiser. It helps with metrics and optimization opportunities. And it also protects you. In the event something goes wrong and we have to block a link or we have to reverse commissions related to an egregious violation, it'll be isolated to that PID. It won't be a question of all of your traffic or all of your links potentially being blocked. By the way, we try not to do that. It is a nuclear option, but sometimes it has to happen. I'm going to keep going fast. I told you a lot of content. <laughs> so uh, SEM, pay-per-click ad hijacks. Also not new, but new things happening. First up, for those who aren't really familiar with it, an ad hijack is just a flashy name for somebody else coming in and taking over an advertiser's spot in their own paid search results. So bidding on a brand name, the ad copy sometimes, they just they copy what the advertiser was doing themselves or something similar or something that's kind of crappy and none of that's good. We've seen more and more of these cases in our network quality investigations. So this graph is uh, the last several years, uh, 2024 is through August, of how many of all of the cases we have related to search marketing were ad hijack related. So not just, oh, they shouldn't have been bidding on the brand, uh, but they were actually hijacking ads. So this is on the rise. We've also, of course, had, uh, hopefully some of you have seen this, partner from article from our friends at Hello Partner, noting that this issue is increasing with subnetworks. And even though it's under the title APAC subnetworks, it's really a global problem, and a lot of the activity happening more in North America, on Google and Bing, and causing issues uh, where it's a little bit harder to detect because it's a subnetwork, although we are actively looking for and addressing these issues as well. Another one, this is a fun one, end users using a loyalty site. Well, I want to be clear, the loyalty publisher is not doing these violations. The end user opening an account like they're just a regular old consumer, then inserting the tracking that will credit their loyalty account into an ad hijack 
so that if an unsuspecting consumer, I just searched on a brand name, yep, that's the one I want, clicks through, instead of your search channel, which should have had that spot getting credited, this fraudulent end user will get credit in their loyalty account if there's a conversion. This has been a problem. <laughs> I know some of you in the audience are here because of this problem. I'm really happy to say that a lot has happened uh, to improve upon this issue already. At CJ, we created a task force made up of our client development, publisher development, compliance, and data science teams, and have been actively reversing transactions related to these ad hijacks. We've used multiple monitoring technologies. We've also uh, used our own data science. And in a lot of cases, we can actually see identifiers that tell us that this transaction came from this behavior. So you know, we <laughs> one of the things about this is that the hijackers are pretty smart and have created a lot of different accounts. So it's been tough for the loyalty publishers to identify them. And for us, we're using these monitoring tech, but they've actually found ways to circumvent the typical tracking monitoring that a pay-per-click service would offer. We've worked closely with our vendors to improve their own detection and identify tracking in a destination URL, even if they wouldn't have recognized that before. And between that and our own data, have found almost 300 advertisers that have been affected by this within CJ. So I'm sure it's far more in the larger industry. Over 100 publishers. Uh, it's a lot of loyalty publishers and then also some sub-affiliate related kind of hearkening back to that other issue. Those are connected as well. And we reversed over 100,000 transactions back to the advertisers, taking that money away from the fraudulent parties. And we worked closely with the publishers so they know what accounts to remove and have been increasing as well their own detection to try to keep these types of users out of their platforms to begin with. It's actually still a relatively small pro problem considering the scope of how much volume happens with loyalty partnerships, but this tiny little percentage can really damage those relationships if we don't get ahead of it. So kind of in that rising tides lift all ships, you know, we've worked closely with the publishers as a shared problem that we can all help each other with with our monitoring vendors as well. Uh, we always are reviewing and validating publisher traffic sources um, for those like thinking about sub-affiliates. We work with sub-affiliate networks. We get them to disclose their individual partners. We can identify those issues, let them know there are a lot of great sub-affiliate networks to immediately take action and have their own network quality as well. So we're trying to get everybody on the same page and, and very much is working. Um, I mentioned returning commissions to the advertisers and then also um, our AI with machine learning, which is our overall network quality approach to identifying anomalies, ele elevating them for a full investigation and addressing any violations, it's looking for these issues as well. So it's helping us find them, especially in like a sub-affiliate type situation. So advertisers, you know, always still you know, uh, list your program terms, um, your prohibited terms, any rules you have, I recommend generally prohibiting most brand-related search advertising as your default. Have that in your program terms. Make sure it's clear to publishers. Make sure there isn't a situation where someone could actually come along and say, I didn't know it wasn't allowed. It's not in the program terms, because that would just be messier than any of us need it to be. Um, but then also, I really strongly recommend, this kind of goes back to my account management days, but is very relevant still, work with some trademark plus which was what we call publishers that you do allow to bid, but who are trusted partners, who can work with you on the ad copy that you want, who will not direct link unless you tell them to, but can actually give you more uh, the real estate on a search engine results page. So you can have additional ad copy, you can have additional information, offers about your brand, and then they can link to a landing page that you're happy with and drive additional volume for you, push competitors out of your search results, and then also, it does actually help push out some of the fraudsters as well, so an added benefit. And then um, I put here, update to our universal tag. That is the key to some of the data insights we've gotten at the transaction level. So those advertisers who have UT integration have been better protected longer, though we worked hard to close those gaps. And so there's a lot of benefits. I'm sure there's some other content today and tomorrow that you can find about integration and why having the most up-to-date integration is important. This is an added one. It actually helps us with compliance for your program. And then monitoring and enforcement, you know, a lot of companies are going to have their own search agency doing competitive and related reviews. You might be able to work some monitoring into that, 
or we do also offer program compliance services, including search monitoring, where we'll have our technologies, we will do the review of the results, we will address it with the publishers, report it all to you, but take that heavy lift off your hands. Publishers, read the program terms. You know, I think everyone here probably knows this because you wouldn't be at a compliance session if you didn't. Uh, but you know, just double check, make sure you're aligned. If you have a special relationship with an advertiser who's allowing you to do something beyond their default, insist, please, that they put it into the program terms. That will protect you. You will have that clear, this is what I'm allowed to do. And then our, also our network quality team won't accidentally think you're just spray bidding when you weren't allowed to. Uh, so it's, it's beneficial all around to get that in there. Loyalty publishers, you know, uh, again, many of you already know this, but do the best you can to require account validation. And by the best, I mean really solid account validation with your users. Uh, implement your own fraud detection prevention. And then don't release funds too early, right? Like, wait till the transaction locks and is closed. There could still be even non-fraud related reasons to do that, like if there's a return or a cancellation or an out of stock item, and you'll save yourself the headache uh, of any related financial concerns. And then lastly, subnetworks, you know, do, you're responsible for them just as uh, if you were, if they were your own site, because you're creating that bridge. So know who they are, communicate the terms of both the network and the advertisers that you're giving them access to, and then monitor and enforce yourself as well. And our network quality team is happy to partner to make the best of all of our information for a more compliant space. All right. Last up, my third co topic today, fake content. This is one of those things where it's, it's a little bit ambiguous. Uh, it can take a lot of forms, but you know, today we see more and more coming from AI generated, uh, fake news, plagiarized, copyrighted content that's been inappropriately copied, uh, information that has been just kind of grabbed to create a site that looks good and then left unupdated. And this is actually a bigger problem in most other digital channels, especially in that like made for advertising context of somebody just put together a page and it's kind of junky and it's not really getting a lot of good conversions, it's just wasting your budget. But in affiliate, it's a challenge as well because it's still a reputational risk. In regulated industries, you know, that information is outdated and touching your affiliate links and promoting old product information, that can still be a real problem. And also, there can still be issues with inefficient spend if your budget is going to that kind of publisher instead of a true value add partner. A couple examples, you know, it, in, in things you can do to just kind of say, hey, this looks weird, is it legit? Just do an exact match search on a phrase. This is actually a, a publisher site promoting mortgages and this isn't even necessarily a violation, but it does kind of make you say like, well, how are they generating content? Because this article text is on a bunch of other sites this affiliate site didn't even come up in the search results, so they're blocking crawlers. How are they sending traffic? It's worth asking before you make a large investment. Uh, this is also one where I, it just kills me that publishers now will sometimes put this whole like, we have all these great experts, meet our team. And then they're just stock photos. Do a quick reverse image search, and this woman's also a yoga instructor and promoting CBD in Germany among other things. And again, maybe it's not a violation, but it, asks, it raises a lot of questions at the very least. So advertisers, uh, you, know, you <laughs> know your publishers. I like to know your publishers, know your partners. This is a big theme. Um, implement automated validation of your transactions and corrections. It's just a good piece of advice overall. But if there is a site that's, say, sending bad leads, uh, credit card fraud, really weird high cancellation rates, that's going to save you and also deter them from trying to hit your program again in the future because they're not going to make any money. Um, you know, just kind of bring that compliance related eye to every opportunity that you're evaluating. Uh, you know, learn to do some of these simple things and just say like, it's legit or your CJ team can do this for you as well. And then I, I have similar web here. Um, most of the other tools I'll talk about are free. This one does cost money, but you might even have it somewhere else in your organization, see if you can get access or trial it, but you can get a lot of great information about where traffic is coming from, what publishers are doing. And then publishers, uh, you know, provide value. Again, all of, this is probably the audience that doesn't need to be told that. 
Um, but you know, attribute all your copy. If you do have AI generated content, label it correctly. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but make sure that it's done right. Uh, disclose all your promo methods, subnetworks. You've heard it before. Know your partners, monitor, enforce. And um, you know, don't use stock photos to represent your staff. All right, real, real quick, um, a few tools. Uh, redirect path is a great one. Chrome extension, way to see all the traffic that's coming through to get to that destination page. You can see CJ links, other networks links, get the identifiers of who is this partner. And you know, if there's a question, this is a great way to research it. Google Ad Center, in the ad hijack space, if you click on the kebab menu, the three vertical dots, you'll get information about who actually placed that ad. So in this example, the green one on top, it's the actual advertiser, they've been verified, all's well. On the red one on the bottom, it is not a verified advertiser, which I understand Google is trying to do more, which will also help the situation. Um, and then you can see that the, the name of the advertiser is uh, certainly not the the actual advertiser in the affiliate sense. Uh, a couple other good tools, just Google exact match, put quotes around a phrase, you'll get other sites that have the exact same content. AI detector by Grammarly, this one's also free, and you can get a sense at least of what's the likelihood of this being AI generated content. Uh, I like TinEye for my reverse image searches. You can also use Google Lens for something similar. TinEye is a Chrome extension, you can do a quick right click and get uh, other places that that image is appearing on the internet. All right, I can hopefully go on for another minute or two. Uh, I'd be remiss not to plug our recent article on Junction about our network quality. So if you're interested in learning more about some of the magic, I encourage you to check it out. And then we do have uh, program compliance services for advertiser programs that want more, very specific to their needs, proactive monitoring. The key takeaways are just a repetition, but if nothing else, take away the look behind the curtain mentality. You know, there's a lot of great opportunities in affiliate, and there's some new and exciting ones. Just make sure you understand what they are, and that it's a fit for your program. Communicate really well with the publisher. And then publishers, you know, read those terms. Uh, if you have questions, we're happy to answer them, but partner closely with your advertisers as well, and make sure that you're not even accidentally going to get into some hot water. All right, if anyone has any questions and no one kicks me off the stage, I can probably address them. <laughs> All right, great. <laughs> I'll be around if anyone wants to talk. Thank you.